So today we're going to talk about improving your hunter gameplay. This is going to be different from my hunter overview, so I will assume you're already familiar with the very basics of hunter. Now there's a lot to cover today, so let's begin. First, let's talk specifically Catalia vs Straga's sword. Here's a full breakdown of how it works. Straga will deal more damage on average as you do not have any conditions to meet. The downside of negative 10% damage resistance is completely negated by 1 out of 10 flash guard. This means if you're seeking maximum damage, the Straga sword would be better for you. Now here's a caveat everyone should know. Catalia swords are a common drop not tied to Gigantics. This means there's a lot of Catalia swords out there that have really good preset skills for cheap compared to Astraga. So, personally for me, I ended up going with Catalia as I can maintain the max HP condition, along with benefiting from a very good preset skill for cheap versus Astraga sword without a preset. So that's pretty much all I have to say for equipment, so let's move on to Hunter itself. Now, starting off with the most popular of Hunter weapons, Sword. So how exactly do we deal the max damage possible? Well, let me introduce you to the world of Caliber Streak. This is the Swiss Army Knife of Sword. Caliber Streak does two very important things for Hunter. It's an easy way to consistently trigger Hunter Arts Avenger, and its damage is shockingly high. According to the Frame Data DPS Google Doc linked in the description below, a completely uncharged caliber streak totals 755 potency in 143 frames. In comparison, two spiral edges uncharged leads to 700 potency in 126 frames. So what exactly does this mean? When accounting for Avenger, caliber streak ends up being your strongest option as each individual hit can trigger Avenger back to back. Caliber Streak also allows you to charge any slash at any point, which leads to on average 1000 potency for the slash you charge. So basically, from a PP efficiency standpoint along with versatility, you should be using uncharged Caliber Streak quite often. However, when possible, you should use Spiral Edge if you can trigger Avenger as it does deal better DPS by a small margin. Now, let's talk about bursting with Sword. There's two burst phases I've noticed in this game. There's your short burst phase and your long break phase. For your short burst phase, you can squeeze in 3-5 to five uncharged caliber streaks before the boss backs off. This is approximately 2.2k to 3.7k potency, and usually this is where it ends because they either reel back or your PP hits zero. So, this is where a different arts hunter comes into play. Assuming your timing is on point during short burst phase, you can fully charge a caliber streak, followed by another caliber streak uncharged, and ending with a spiral edge uncharged into different arts hunter. This leads to a total of 4915 potency in a short burst phase. Now, you're probably wondering why not just full charge caliber streak twice since it is 6.4k total potency. Well, the reason is that on paper that is correct, and during a long break phase it is correct as well. However, during a short burst phase, because the boss does move back at the end, this leads to some ticks of the third hit of Caliber Streak potentially missing. Spiral Edge and the 4th and 5th normal attacks in Sword give you slight mobility and have a shockingly far reach, which pretty much guarantees a 4.9k potency. Now, for long break phases, Fully charging Caliber Streak is the fastest way to deal the most amount of damage by raw frame data from what I can see. However, as the boss is getting to the end of its break phase, you should consider ending your Caliber Streak early for a Spiral Edge in a different arts hunter just to catch it reeling back. Now, if someone out there has a better rotation for a burst phase, please comment down below so we can learn a better rotation as this is what I've been using. So that was a lot to take in for Sword, so here's a basic summary. Fully charge your Caliber Streak, followed by an uncharged Caliber Streak. After you do those two, perform an uncharged Spiral Edge and two normal attacks. This leads to approximately 4.9k potency guaranteed in the short amount of time you have for a short burst phase. For a long burst phase, fully charge your Caliber Streaks, but as it's nearing the end, hit Spiral Edge into your 4th and 5th normal to catch it reeling back for extra damage. Now moving on, let's talk Wired Lance. This one is going to be pretty short as I view Wired Lance as more of a mobility and AoE option. 
So first, let me talk about the main mechanic that a lot of people have been missing, which is called Critical Range. When your reticle on Wired Lance turns orange, you're inside of your critical range. For Wired Lances, this is a medium distance. Now, there is a very easy way to guarantee this range every single time. The forward weapon action knocks you back to the exact range you need for Wired Lance. Now for DPS, Cutting Layer and Turbulent Train gives your most consistent damage, while Vein Mixture is slightly behind but is more for your AoE. I use Turbulent Train more when I'm anticipating counter and Cutting Layer when I know there's no threat. This is because Turbulent Train allows you to cancel into the weapon action at a slightly earlier frame than Cutting Layer and is more spammable in general. Now for some sick Hunter mobility strategies, go to Options, Keyboard Settings, Shortcuts, and change Switch Palette to the Number Keys or Function Keys. You may be wondering, why not the numpad? Well, if you bound your weapon action to Shift like I do for easy access, Shift plus Num1 actually opens up the Quick menu which gets you killed. Now, anytime you need to travel upwards or horizontally using those keybinds, you can fast switch to your Wired Lance and use a weapon action, which gives you your perfect critical range, or you can switch the sword and partisan. And now for the final weapon partisan, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this weapon needs some changes. Damage wise, it's actually okay. So what exactly is the problem with partisan? Well, if you take the words partisan problems and you delete all letters but the 16th letter in the alphabet, you get PP. Partisan is a PP monster, which is its downfall. Every single PA you see for Partisan, you should honestly slap an extra 120 potency as that's the gain of Assault Charge. Now, where this all messes up is that Assault Charge, for some ungodly reason, costs 10 PP. This means every single Partisan PA is now officially 30 PP or higher instead of a reasonable 20. On top of this, there's no weapon action counter which hurts Partisan, but you do have longer reach and Assault Charge. So, if I had full reign over changing Partisan, I would honestly make Volk Raptor 30 seconds and remove the PP cost from Assault Charge, but keep the parry exactly the same as it is right now. I feel that if he added Assault Charge as a weapon action parry, it might push Partisan into the overpowered side, but it would be very nice for mobility. But, since we don't have those changes, here's what I did to make Partisan a working monster. First, my choice was Viazzo Partisan, as that's pretty much your only choice right now. However, if you did not know, you can multi-weapon a Talos on top of this. This leads to fixing the majority of PP problems I had on Partisan, along with providing some extra DPS with the Talos weapon action. Now for DPS rotations, for burst, it mostly boiled down to slapping Volcraptor down, then doing charge cleaving sights, waiting out the second hit, and then performing an assault charge. On a stationary target, this proved to be the fastest DPS I could output. This comes out to 970 potency and 188 frames, while in comparison, a fully charged Fatal Tornado plus assault charge is 224 frames for 1070 damage. The difference of 36 frames makes a slight difference in DPS output, so both of these variations could work. Now for actual combat chasing, a lot of it came down to using Cleaving Scythe and Fatal Tornado Uncharged into Assault Charge to chase. Uncharged Fatal Tornado is pretty good PP efficiency to DPS and has very nice range plus tracking on bosses. Although, you do need to be careful as Fatal Tornado does lock you in the animation versus Cleaving Scythe's short animation. Now alternatively, and this is a pretty funny rotation to do, thrusting Javelin into Assault Charge is better DPS than just an Uncharged Fatal Tornado. This is 10 frames faster and a negligible amount of potency loss for basically infinite range. This also gives Partisan shockingly good constant damage plus chase at the cost of nuking your PP bar. However, in terms of PP efficiency, Uncharged Fatal Tornado and Assault Charge would beat out Spear Throwing as it produces 633 potency in 148 frames, with less PP used overall. Also, for charging Assault Charge, if you can get the charged version off, definitely do it. I primarily use the uncharged version for mobility, but if you're close enough, the charged version should be used assuming you won't be hit out of it. So there was a lot that said, so here's a basic rundown of rotations for Partisan. Thrusting Javelin tapped into Assault Charge is great for long-range Avenger proccing. 
Fatal Tornado into Assault Charge is great PP efficiency. A fully charged Cleaving Scythe or Fatal Tornado into Assault Charge for your max burst DPS rotation. And as stated before, if someone has found a better rotation, post it in the comments as it helps everyone to share your findings. Now for the final thing we're going to talk about, Hunter's Physique. Hunter's Physique has two uses, defensively, which a lot of players do, or extremely offensively. Hunter's Physique on main class Hunters turns you virtually immortal, and this is extremely useful on Partisan. It completely throws out all of Partisan's weaknesses out the window. At 1 out of 5, you gain 50% damage reduction, which allows you to effortlessly tank and trigger Avenger with no fear of death. So, the best time to use Hunter's Physique is when the boss is standing somewhat still but attacking constantly. This gives you more leeway for Avenger procs, and for Partisan's case, maintain complete uptime for 30 seconds without having to parry. This can lead to some disgustingly high damage as you are not knocked back and the extra damage resistance plus new Genesis units allows you to tank quite a lot of hits in general. So in summary, Sword is a jack-of-all-trades weapon and Caliber Shriek is very versatile. Wired Lance is great for AoE and mobility, and the forward weapon action leaves you in critical range every time. Partisan has a steeper learning curve due to its high PP costs, but overall is a pretty fast and good weapon. And finally, Hunter's Physique should be used more aggressively as it allows you to maintain easy Avenger procs and insane uptime due to how it works. And that pretty much concludes the video. Apologies for the length and delay of the release of this video. If you have any questions, comments, or insights about your rotation for Hunter, comment down below. I love reading and replying to all your comments, and sharing knowledge is extremely helpful in this game as it helps benefit the whole community. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and if you enjoy this content and would like to support the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, or share the video around to help people learn NGS. Also, thank you so much everyone for the support, we've managed to hit 2k subscribers. Tuesday at 4pm at twitch.tv slash everydairy, we're gonna have a pizza party and you're all invited. We might even have some soda for you too, wouldn't that be wild? Unfortunately, it will be bring your own pizza and soda as we cannot share pizza through a PC. Yet. Anyways, if you'd like updates on what I'm doing, check out my Twitter at everydairy. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day today. This is Casual Game Recorders from Every Dairy, and I'll see you Wednesday, where I'll be talking about a certain class who likes to flip around.